Hello, and welcome to the Cursed Content Club, the only podcast where we're bound by hell. Today, <laughs> we will be watching the 2009 movie, Hellbinders. And with me, as always, is Dan and Bob Video Games from Gigaboots.com. Glad to be here, Feel. Bob, how are you? How are you feeling? Very excited. <laughs> and KZ Excellent from KZExcellent.com. I'm ready to bosh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Johnny Young Bosch is in this movie. <laughs> He's so, one of the main characters. <laughs> I'm just going to start the expectations round. I don't know what to expect with this. I kind of expect something um with a similar energy to like one of those low-budget Japanese action movies where there's a lot of really bad effects. Uh, th- I believe, and I could be wrong, the uh, name for that sort of genre of thing is Tokusats or Common Writer? I can't... <laughs> look, hey, look, look, listen, Dan, your vendetta has no place here. Yeah, There's also does. a lot of actual movies like that. Oh, no, I, oh, no, I said, I said toku movies aren't real movies on what am I doing? KZ, <laughs> your impression? Uh, uh, my, my, my impression that tokusatsu is a valid, a valid, is that what we're talking about? No. <laughs> oh. Uh, this Bleach movie looks really cool, and I think it'll be the best thing we've watched so far. I can't believe we hit Bleach so quickly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's it's really surprising. I thought I blacked out because it's been a long day, but look at here. We got Bleach the movie. Dan, I'm sure you've seen this, so what's your expectations? I, I have not seen this. I wouldn't let Bob make me see this, but unfortunately, <laughs> life, life ha- finds a way. I, ten finds away. I expect this to be better than the sort of digestive calmness, obviously. It's a film featuring characters and a <laughs> plot, I assume. Uh, and it might even be cogent. So uh, I, I think this I love is when gonna, it's cogent. I think this is going to be all right. Bob, what are your expectations? Oh, you see, I, I bought this game, or, sorry, this movie when Blockbuster <laughs> was going out of business. <laughs> oh, no. I haven't watched it yet. This is going to be my first oh, morning, too. Blockbuster went out of business after 2009? Yeah. No, this is one of the last things they had on the shelf. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll buy this. It's still in the Blockbuster box over here. Yeah. Um, I I respect Bob's approach of saying, so I bought this film. I haven't seen it, but you know what? Fuck it. We're going to watch it like this. It has Ray Park. It has Johnny on Bosch. I think we might be sit- sitting at about a King of Fighters, the movie level. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds Who's about Ray right. Park? Uh, he's who Darth Maul. He's Darth Maul. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so expect some sick flips. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> this movie's gonna be it. This movie's breaking through the what? fucking rankings. It's gonna be a six. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if a movie gets 20, it's officially declared not cursed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so Ray Park was in this... The same year he was in G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. That sounds about right. Yeah, this, this was the passion project. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that Snake was the cat passion product. This was the cash cow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh-huh. So uh, we're going to go watch this excellent film. Yeah, it's going to be great. And we're back. Let's get right into this with a summary of Hellbinders, a movie I never heard of until 90 minutes ago when Bob told me about it. But yet I will be the one giving this <laughs> up. Uh, this just makes sense. Hellbinders is a 2009 ripoff of Sin City, starring various stunt actors like Johnny Young Bosch and Toad from X-Men. This movie baffles start to finish as through scene after scene of intrigue, you begin to wonder... What the fuck is wrong with the video quality of this film? (laughs) So, Dan, explain what was wrong with the film quality of this film. Uh, So, the the thing people need to realize is camcorders have... uh, When you you film something on a camcorder, you have infinite sharpness of depth. Your depth of field is 
everything on screen. <laughs> so uh, imagine that. So you've completely obliterated uh, your cinematic quality. And then you color graded it to add in colors where there weren't colors, but you didn't do it correctly and make it even per shot. This movie is fucking weird looking, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Per there is a scene that KZ, I think it was KZ dubbed, or was it you, uh, Day for Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that because was me, it, well, yeah. It, they, <laughs> yeah. They had color graded it to make it seem like either very early morning or dusk yeah. or sunset. Yeah. They, but <laughs> they had just made it amber. Yeah, it's just yeah. golden. That's all it was. They just couldn't fucking decide what they were doing with it. They're like, it's uh, this cool thing. Adam Jensen walked up and pissed over the image. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't ask to piss. Sadly. Sadly, he didn't throw his Doritos on the screen. He was out. <laughs> so, I'm going to give this a one. Yeah. Because it it lack, it never really delivered on what you would expect from this. Mm -hmm. I could see that. This is a movie that has Johnny Young Bosch. It has the largest man to ever <laughs> live. <laughs> it has Toad from the X-Men. It has Dan Southworth as a like a demon samurai yakuza, but also it the is, henchman. It, yeah, he's it. He plays, and it has like a guy that looks like Tony Danza turn into a. Uh, <laughs> it's like, like if Tony Danza the, fucked Kylo Ren. It he, he turns into like the Green Goblin, but also <laughs> um, Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> But the point is, this movie disappoints on every level once you realize who's in it <laughs> and the concept, because it's just like nothing in this movie was raw. It was. I think there were some pretty raw things. <laughs> there were. Yeah, I disagree. <laughs> I uh, can I go ahead or would you like to elaborate on your review? Uh, I it gets one star because like it never it isn't bold enough okay the most you get is johnny young bosch and dan southworth having a katana fight for a little bit in a dark uh parking garage and while that's that's good you, you never really get like the big fancy elaborate fight scene like in the in the final battle in this is like evil like even like tiny kylo ren beating up a giant man and throwing Johnny Young Bosch around. <laughs> <laughs> but then the Mortal Kombat like falling through the hell well happens. Okay, you're right. That was that was the that was <laughs> that, was, that was peak insanity. Which, like, all, right. It's also in the picture. The whole picture movie mode. needed to be on that level. <laughs> KZ, it was picture but, in picture next to picture next to background picture. Yeah. It was like what are Dan, you doing? Dan, you may go next. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to give this movie a two. It exceeded my incredibly low expectations. <laughs> uh, it was delightfully shitty in a number of ways that may have been expected, but were still delightful. For example, shoving a sword into a dude, him exploding light, having a bunch of things fly out of him, and then when the sword is done and he's done exploding, his shirt's fine. He's not cut. Why would he be? <laughs> He's okay. Everything's fine. There's just a bunch of things like that where it's 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 impressive. Which uh, is weird because when uh Kane, the largest man to ever live, gets blasted by a shotgun, his shirt has holes for the rest of the movie. Yes. Um environmental storytelling. I would I would like to stress because people may not take <laughs> feels words as literally as they need to be taken. This dude literally is the largest man who's ever lived. Every time people say Ben Swolo is built like a fridge, no, this guy <laughs> is built like a fridge. I was like, I, no, I don't, Ben I, Swolo is built like a fridge. This dude is the truck the fridge came in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but yeah, I I I was delighted by how Johnny Young Bosch is, you know, Johnny Young Bosch. He does that I'm angry but crying and desperate scene that he gets in everything he's in. Uh, <laughs> Ray it's Park. required by his contract. Ray Park, a.k.a. Toad, a.k.a. Darth Maul, is incredible as a bad actor. A.k.a. Snake Eyes. <laughs> a.k.a. Snake Eyes. 
Wait, was he actually called that? He's incredible. He's Snake Eyes in uh, the G.I. Joe movies. He's oh, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, cause, but he's in the mask, so you never know. It, he's incredible in this. He's very good at what he's doing here. Um, he's being Ray Park. He's saying cool lines. Not a single one of them is cool. <laughs> Not a <laughs> they are single one. Bad. Incredibly bad. Um, I I think this delivers in every single way I could have expected. I didn't expect anything. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's still a two. Stellar. Uh, and that's my review. Uh, Bob, do you want to go next? Sure. I give the three. <laughs> I was, I was entertained throughout. It was all bad, but it was entertaining. <laughs> like there was a moment of downtime with this movie. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I would consider the last third where they had like fifteen minutes of yeah when they rambling the plot off about that stuff. Not great. <clears throat> yeah, that was B not great. But there is enough. Just stupidity <laughs> at constant rates. Like, Johnny Young Bosch gets the pancakes and covers them in ketchup and starts eating them. <laughs> and then like, the other guy, Ray Park, looks at it and is so grossed out by it, he pushes away his own pancakes. <laughs> he can't even eat pancakes anymore. Johnny Young Bosch ruins pancakes forever in this film. It's the worst diner I've ever seen. <laughs> it's... I like how when they show him eating, they don't show the food in the frame because he's like, I'm not fucking eating that. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, there's I, no I don't know ketchup. why you made this a character quirk. I, I don't know. But he I'm might have accidentally that. done that and then they had to deal with it. You're like, oh, Jesus. You did no it No way. <laughs> it's not possible. a chance. There was a bot. It could have even been a joke. It's not by him. possible. No. <laughs> so a three, huh? Yeah. Wow. We got one, two, and three. KZ. Fuck. We never said it would be easy. You gonna make me make this the number? <laughs> I think I'm... All right. I think uh, I'm gonna do it in the reverse. No. <laughs> no, that's too harsh. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's way too harsh. Yeah, it'd be harsh if I just gave it a zero. I could say it lost a point for every 10 minutes of rambling nonsense on the screen that wasn't fighting. I could do that, but I'll give it a three. I'll give it a three. Uh, it was an enjoyable film. Uh, every single cut was hilarious where it just goes, Phew! and then you're somewhere else. The lighting is completely different. Now it's blue. <laughs> My favorite there, transition fighting was, so <laughs> was Dan Souser's walking across the screen. And there being a bar above him. Okay, that... Um, <laughs> No, no, fuck it, never mind. It's getting a four because of that one shot of the house with the clouds in the sky. Yes, just that was unreal. Yeah, the, the, the really bad Sin City ripoff. Ludicrous. There was so much audacious. This had a, there was a high amount of, sh of moments in this movie where I was so, I was dying from how boring it was, where they're just talking. But man, those highs. <laughs> yeah, that's always worth it. That last third was real rough. That horse. <laughs> that horse made this a three automatically. The production logo at the beginning of a horse on fire running like hell was completely unexpected. <laughs> if you expected that, you're on the drugs. <laughs> the, the, the only reason I feel it was so great is right before we started recording, feels like there's no way that the production logo is going to be the best part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> And then we immediately get to Flaming Horse. <laughs> yeah, no. The, that commentary, you guys. We are losing it for the first, like, three minutes because of that. Uh, speaking of which, how can they get that commentary, Mr. Feel? By, by going to our Patreon at <laughs> patreon.com slash gbpodcasts. Uh, for every Cursed Content Club episode, we produce a commentary track and that is where you can find them. $5 a month gets you all of our commentary tracks, plus many other bonuses. That is patreon.com slash gbpodcasts. I would say it's worth it this month just to watch us lose our fucking shit over that. <laughs> I don't think anyone anywhere could have predicted that production logo. Who the fuck would think of that? Anyway, so what's that put the final score at? Let's see. Eight. 
We got a one, a two, a three, and oh no, it gets uh, it, it's it's at nine, nine. Okay, so KZ did give it a three. No, I gave it a four. Oh, okay. Oh, you gave it cool. a four, so then it's a ten. I had to give wow. it a four because I remember that shot with the house in the clouds. All right. That thing you're gonna make into a Patreon bumper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So now we have to uh, choose our favorite moment in the film and since Casey called dibs he gets to go first yeah i called dibs on the horse <laughs> it's Which a powerful I did scene as as i was breaking down yeah he had a stroke i'm not an asthmatic but i think i had one of those attacks it was pretty good that's it <laughs> that just that horse is good all We're right stuck on there for like three minutes i think it was more like less than one but still yeah, it just, it had a deep impact. <laughs> we might have been laughing for three. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it was a lot. It was a lot to deal with right out of the gate. Hey, Bob. So, Bob, you may go with your favorite moment. Okay, so there's the scene where they're fighting in a parking garage. In Kane, <laughs> the gigantic man, just grabs a pipe off of the wall, like it's li- like for lightings or something, and he just rips it off and starts fighting with it. Yeah. It's great. It's amazing. This pipe would weigh like a thousand pounds if it existed in real life. It's a four inch lead pipe and he had like fifteen feet of it. And he he was able to just rip it off the wall. And yeah. continued the fight with it for the whole sequence. And it didn't even like it didn't even seem like he had to try that hard to rip it off. No, it's... <laughs> Again, this man, the biggest will be man in ever. the upcoming film Doctor Sleep, uh, credited as Large Man. <laughs> <laughs> A little disappointed it's not Largest Man, but okay, just Large Man. Every other role he's in is normal, but that one, Large Man. I mean, there's one dude in this now, movie that's uh, taller than him, and taller than everyone else in the whole movie. Yeah. It's, yeah, he's enormous. But, yeah. but he's not the biggest man. No, he's not. He's not ripped. <laughs> he's long. My favorite scene was the scene early on with uh, the Yakuza and the Japanese men when I was watching and I was f- feigning not to fall asleep. It was just the beginning of the movie. Got to gotta last a little that ways. And I go, is that fucking Dan Southworth? <laughs> and then the character, like, trips. And then he stands up, and I'm like, oh, fuck, that's Dan Southworth. And my heart fills with joy at seeing Virgil in this film. Yeah. It's a good moment. Feel good moment of the movie right there. The whole squad. And yet, somehow, Ruben now, Langdon Dan. was involved, but... Not on screen, right? We didn't in see the, him. He was in the Apparently, I, I, I think I think that might have been thanks. Yeah, uh, it's just might have been special. Like you know, he's people. just behind the scenes helping everyone come together to make an amazing film. I want to see this in 4K. <laughs> I want them to make this like incredibly Dude. high video quality. I want to see every he, detail. He, Bob, have I know you it's checked, not there though. Have you checked for a Blu-ray? Uh, have is you this checked like for a Blu-ray? Abbott children complete. Uh, I didn't check for the Blu-ray. Let me see. I, I don't think a Blu-ray of this exists. I doubt it, too. Um. So my favorite scene, which, you know, it's not a whole scene. It's just uh, one sequence, you know, is them high speed fucking through the portal hell with their, yes. with their crotches and everything bumping together as they fall. That was flailing as fucking that was rages. the most channel awesome moment of the movie. It was insane i never would have expected that from this or any other film in a thousand years i think they were trying to make it like the matrix fight scene with uh or in the third one but they just failed immensely sort of like to shake it's them and just, have a fall real it's fast like, fucking it makes gorilla interrupted look like a high quality production <laughs> it was like an accidental um they accidentally made one of the fucking ending cutscenes of Mortal Kombat 4. <laughs> yes, yes that's, that's the energy it had. You may have defeated my physical form, but my spiritual form will exact revenge on you, Sub-Zero. Quan Chi punches Johnny Young Bosch in the ear. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Dan Southworth. I can't fucking deal with it. Yeah, that's my favorite scene. I never would have expected that in a million fucking years for fucking anything. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just when you thought they were done, they show you the one final trick. Mm-hmm. That was the, and just one more thing, the Apple conference trick. <laughs> <laughs> that was the movie's equivalent of telling me to blow it out my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, they showed us the inside of your ass. <laughs> uh, this is a very impressive set. This movie has very, very impressive sets. I think it had, like, they had, like, two warehouse buildings. Or, like, room. Is it Denny's? <laughs> no. A Denny's is much nicer than that place, please. And a Waffle House. Oh, it wasn't even Waffle House tier. It was like, imagine the middle of nowhere. Imagine just the middle of absolutely fucking nowhere. A that Shoney's? <laughs> I, can't, I can't vouch for the quality of Shoney's. I haven't been there in forever. <laughs> Me neither. That's what I just assumed. Yeah. Now, the least, our least favorite scene in the film. I think I'll go first, so nobody else steals it. That's my right. <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, sounds like you. Okay. The moment we realized that Dan Southworth was a sequel hook and was not in the climax of this film. Yeah, that was rough. It was not a good time. You left the best part for a movie that will never exist. Yeah. Yeah. Like the whole movie is hyped up. That's the one who actually is cool. A sequel with Reuben Langdon's in it. Oh, God. Now, Dan, what scene did you hate the most? It's complicated. There are a few scenes where, you know, it's not exactly the best. And to be fair, the one you pick, definitely the cream of the crop. It, it is really disappointing when that happens. But I'm going to choose one that's kind of similar. Um, the scene where they're fighting Virgil and it's in box, it's like box in a box, you know, it's picture in picture in picture. <laughs> and then he's just done. You know, he they, just walks backwards and disappears. Yeah, they, they punch him a few times. They cut him and then he just walks backwards into the shadows. That's it. He's gone now. Bye, Dan Southworth. <laughs> For those who don't know, Dan Southworth is Virgil from the Devil May Cry series. <laughs> and in this movie he plays he, Virgil he from the also, Devil May Cry series <laughs> he also kills the monk before leaving the movie forever that's the weird part yeah I feel like we didn't really deliver on the monk arc very well they're like we don't have enough money to have a burial look they didn't have time to have a burial Dan okay <laughs> the movie would explode if it was over 90 minutes yes <laughs> KZ what did you despise the most um Probably one of the first uh, overly long, talking, boring scenes, which was between uh, Kane and uh, that dude. <laughs> that was just like chained up in oh. the dungeon. Oh, Beelzebub. I think I was still running on the high that was, this shouldn't look anywhere near this bad. I think that's what got I me I through that, that scene. That scene interested me because I am 90% sure that the door... And the set yeah. existed in different places. I, I was also having, um, I was running off that high on the eighth or ninth shot, reverse shot. But there were forty five more of those in yeah. that scene. Yeah. Yes, that that uh, scene is rough. <laughs> but it, say, it is in a room that's least. clearly made of cardboard. <laughs> it's an endurance. It's an endurance scene, and it does a lot of psychic damage to you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd say that that was the low point. Fair enough. Bob's turn. So this one's like super small and I should really choose something better, but I think this one's still hilarious that it made in the movie. <laughs> the the end of a shot where like Johnny on Bosch is talking to some dude, then he walks out of frame and it freeze frames him as he walks out of the frame on an interlaced, interlaced frame. Yeah, so. so it's like combing artifacts, man. And keep in mind, this movie's 480p. So it's like 480i gigantic chunks of him. It was so bad. The transitions in this movie make you feel like you got hit by a super in a fucking fighting game. <laughs> yeah, they are all intensely bad. It like goes into this box in a box thing and it seems like they're trying to be sin city but they you like you like you go through the portal or like it splits apart in four directions or it comes together in four directions and they pass each other yeah. and 
or like it hard wipes. It's fucking uh, look exhausting. Uh, just look for After Effects transition packages, and you can probably find most of these. I I feel like you couldn't find anything that looked this bad nowadays. Yeah, no, you'd have to go transport back in time ten years. You would have to be watching some pretty old fucking videos. Yes, I guarantee there's something as bad as this that you can go buy right now. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like right now they'd have a little bit more polish. Yeah, I feel like the marketplace is a little too stiff for anyone to be selling. I can this go. Movie. I bet we can find a movie filmed on a cheap phone's camera. Yeah, I mean. That's 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 pretty common now. They're like, oh, I made this movie on a phone camera, and for some reason, people find that really impressive. <laughs> Let's not talk about how you hate uh, that one good yeah, movie. Yeah, just... what movie? I don't know what you're talking about. I forget what its name. It's like Tangerine. It was shot on an iPhone camera. I don't fucking. I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, that's... favorite character. Bob's turn. Bob gets to go first. Sure. Lucky, lucky Bob. Right. Oh man, I get my, I get get anybody. Bob <sighs> gets to take anyone to prom. <laughs> Which one will it be, Bob? Will it be Dan Southworth? I mean, Dan Ray Southworth Park? is really good. I'm going to. Will it I'm be, going will, to let someone else. Will it be the flaming horse? Will it be the flaming horse? No, Casey's That's got a valid on that pick. I want to put that out there. Yep, correct. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Johnny on Bosch is just something about seeing him act. I like is how he's like, yeah, he's he's serious ninja man, and then he pulls his mask down and eats pancakes, and is just uh, Adam from the Power Rangers for like five minutes out of the movie. Yeah, it makes no sense, and it's it's the real thing. Eats. Eats pancakes, throws uh, shurikens on woman's eyes. Yes, <laughs> near the end of the movie, like takes the the hidden shuriken from his sword and shows it into a woman's eye. It's uh, it's pretty raw. She's a demon, so it's fine. Kills his oh, master. Okay. He's like, you set me free. <laughs> <laughs> it's and then it played some Evanescence. <laughs> Man, if this movie had a licensed soundtrack with that and oh, other things oh. like. Uh, that had elevated five points. It yeah, no longer even it, be on the scale. Auto five, automatic five. <laughs> it's just nothing but soundtracks you expect from DBZ AMVs. Hell yeah, yeah. From DBZ dubbed film. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that too. They're the same thing. It, yeah, they're the same. Thing. Or just, or just Devil May Cry five. I mean, just Devil May Cry combat songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be like, you got nothing, and nothing's got you. Oh, it's me. Okay, I lost my order. It happens. My the f best character in this film, uh, the, the, I can't pick Johnny Young Bosch, unfortunately, because Bob stole him. Uh, Them's the rules. My right <laughs> is the first select. Mm -hmm. I have to go with Dan Southworth, just because everybody else was a bad actor <laughs> and not in a fun way. <laughs> I was gonna say everybody. Most of the other characters had a isolation one one nine esque energy to their performances. I feel oh like why you got a little bit of that, but why are you saying that like it's a bad thing? <laughs> That's what I like, don't um, get. A uh, a demon leader man who looks like Kylo Ren a little bit. He you could just put him in isolation one one nine. That's the same level of performance. <laughs> He'll, he'll send that dead body to the demon world if you follow him on Twitter. <laughs> but who's your favorite, Dan? Uh, I'm going to say Ray Park for one reason. One reason. <laughs> He's going to the moon? No. Ray Park did something I didn't think was even possible. Do you know what that was, Bob? What was that, Dan? He spat nothing but one-liners the entire film and not a single one landed. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, true. I have uh, never yeah. seen that in my life. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty epic. Even Shulk gets one. <laughs> <laughs> Even Demix got I one. Your yeah. attitude. I just I'm trying to think. Every single one failed. It's like, it was bad. spectacularly, yeah. I just kind of... That kept... part where he goes, it's Ray Park time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just sat there the whole movie just being like, mm, 
Yeah, no, missed another. <laughs> I was just waiting for the moment where one would land. And like, yeah, I'm going to list him as my favorite because I've never seen that before. <laughs> he, he really broadened my horizons. You hey, know, he's worked hard. He was in the King of Fighters movie. Ugh. It was a great movie. Wait, isn't he fucking Rugal? Yes, yes, he's Rugal in the King of Fighters movie. He should have been like, you know what happens to a demon when you fill it with bullets? Same thing that happens to everything else. And then he shoots them. If I remember right, <laughs> Ray actually... Park is slightly shorter than me. He shouldn't be Park Rugal. No. He shouldn't be Rugal. Yeah, no. No, that, the, the casting of that whole movie's wrong, but I think he had. I, if I remember right, he's way better in that movie than he is in this movie. I, impressive, I know. <laughs> yeah, see, that's why I'm not picking on the other people so much because the way. Because Ray Park can act better than this. The I feel like the director was like, no, say it more this. Say it. His direction must have essentially been say it bad. Nah, his problem was. His problem was, okay, you're cool. He should have been like, no, no, not good enough. Do it again. <laughs> What's my motivation? You're cool. Oh, okay. You ever see the movie Boondock say, oh, you want me to act like that? No, I'm just asking you. <laughs> have you seen it? I've been meaning to. Here, it's a good KZ, film. It's time yeah. for your favorite character. The horse. <laughs> Going with the horse. Yeah, the horse. <laughs> Not you're not gonna go with Kane, the large man. It's gonna be the horse. He's he's above the other three major characters. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. The only time I liked Kane was when he lifted up that pipe. Kane, <laughs> and, and when he was perfectly fine after getting hit with a shotgun because skin's thick. He also punched a dude in the face, and the dude's head just basically turned to blood. <laughs> yeah, no, Kane's great. If Ray Park didn't redefine my expectations of B grade actors. Then I would have gone with Kane. Uh, never forget that that one scene where the demons were foiled by dominoes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm gonna add another. Uh, an this isn't another bad scene. Uh, the gore shot that was just Johnny Young Bosch disemboweling somebody, and we didn't yeah. get an exploding head from Kane punching people. Uh, I'm yeah. fine with the disembowel because there there were too many scenes of her going. I'm drawing this circle. I'm doing it. Here I come. Working on it. Here comes Grandma. <laughs> now it's time for our least favorite characters. Mm. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm going first. I'm pretty sure I've got a beat on your turn order. <laughs> She's like, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It go ahead. Feels like no. I'm going first again. <laughs> Fuck you, Dan. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, Ray Park's partner, uh, the lady. Oh, the lady. Which one yeah. he had two. Uh, the lady stuck around long enough for me to really get tired of her bad acting. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Not Pitbull, then. Yeah, not when Pitbull. When she first showed up, I made a joke about her being the lady from Good Burger, and honestly, her acting was worse. <laughs> yes, no. That's, I hate to worse say this. Worse than Carmen Electra. Didn't expect this, but uh, most people in this movie don't act as well as the characters in Good Burger. <laughs> Yeah, no, Good Burger is definitely I'm a much more professional to, production. I'm trying to think of a tactful way to say this. Uh huh. It's, not, acting it's not easy, is it? Felt like I don't even want to uh -huh. say it. Yeah, no, that's fine. You don't need to say it. Maybe it's something people need to see for themselves, like The Matrix. That felt like the acting that Jade from uh, the second World Combat movie had, where oh, it's just. God. <laughs> Oh, God. Just some random person who can't even speak English, they have to dub in. Oh, God. Um, oh, God. Imagine, I'm sure we'll imagine never a have character, to watch that. Imagine a character in a parody film, mm -hmm. and the entire gag for that character was, she's pretty, but she can't act, but she gets jobs anyway because the directors like that she's pretty. Yeah. Her acting is worse than that character's fake bad acting. Would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. that's accurate and depressing. It's both of these things. Man, what a bummer. So, uh, KZ is the, is the horse also your least favorite actor? <laughs> no, the fire. <laughs> <laughs> now, should the production fire or the pentagram? Yeah, or or the Diablo fire effects in hell. Diablo's a good game. <laughs> no, those were stu no, those were stupendous. <laughs> That's a good word for them, I feel. Yeah. 
So, uh, sorry, Bob. It's actually your turn, apparently, oh, and I, I, yeah, I, it was Bob's turn. I totally sure. just, I needed to know if the fire was. This. <laughs> Anyways, um, my least favorite character is probably Ray Park. <laughs> Ooh, because basically the same reason as Dan's favorite character. He's <laughs> constantly spouting one liners that are bad. <laughs> but see, here's the thing, Bob. Just like <laughs> shitty writing and from soft games. You need to understand there's a narrative conceit for Ray Park to not land a single one-liner. <laughs> Environmental storytelling. Exactly. Well, he's supposed to be cool. Yeah, like there's too many moments where it's like, oh no, he, this is I don't think anyone supposed in the movie looked at him with remote ounce of, man, you're cool. <laughs> but he still but had the confidence. You were all supposed to think he's cool. Yeah, Bob, people like that have confidence. Yeah, no. It's, he didn't have a soul. It was... It was a lot. It was a lot of really, really bad acting outside of the one-liners. Mm -hmm. Of like, oh, he's supposed to be depressed. Um, this isn't landing at all. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, Ray Park. Ah, jeez. He's so much worse than the other two, two main characters because like Jonghyun Bosch and Kane are amazing. <laughs> they they don't have like a smirk fused to their face. <laughs> also, you don't get any backflips and cool stuff from him, like. He's Ray Park. He should be doing cool things. Instead, they have him being the, shoot, the shooting guy, and they don't have any yeah, way to shoot, choreograph man. that. And so it's just as like could have at least given him, a, given him a sword to use in one hand, or like any excuse to have him do backflips or use a bow. Because I feel like every time he shows up in anything, he's actually cool, and he's hitting or uses a bow to fight, like Darth Maul. I think even Rugal does uses one King of Fighters. I'm just thinking of all of the special effects to show the blood coming off people getting shot. Oh yeah, and the guns effects look terrible, and he's and the main the instigator of them. And the souls coming out of the people. <laughs> yeah, those souls were a stock effect. Yeah, all of it just was. The souls, and then Dan Southworth reacting to them hitting him, which was never elaborated on. Right, of Dan Southworth's whole movie just absorbing souls, and who knows why. And also, he had to be, like, drug. Before he got possessed, he was drug in front of the the other Yakuza guy. It's like, uh, that method of transitioning was never needed again. Right, because that was clearly, like, some sort of upper echelon of demon that wanted the, that's been transformed between other bodies. But we don't really find out exactly what the deal is with that. A lot isn't elaborated on in this movie. Like, my favorite character, I mean, my least favorite character, fuck him. Uh, Beelzebub, who... Yeah. I don't know why he's in this movie. Yeah. Well, he's the se sequel hook. But he's not, though. That's that's Tetsuro Dan Daniel Southworth. Oh, if anything, both. Beelzebub yeah. is... Like, I, I don't... Like, he tells Kane to stop the Oni from summoning his demon legions in the world, which you think he'd want them to do? Is Tetsuro Zobak? Bezelbub isn't actually a bad guy, I think is what they're going for. He's just, he's the ruler of hell, so he doesn't, but he doesn't care about the, this plan that the Legion has. I mean, that's why he helps, um... So, he has them foil them and then gives Toad his soul back? Cause, yeah. uh, oh, we didn't even fucking talk, I didn't, nobody even fucking mentioned that. So, the fucking demons in this movie can possess you if you have a soul, but because Toad was clinically dead for 20 <laughs> minutes... He doesn't have a soul. His soul already passed, so that means he can't... This is the first time we're mentioning. That, I mean, that means he can't be possessed. I mean, we have even, even... though I would think that would make it be easier for him to be possessed. We haven't right. even tried to recap the plot of this film in the <laughs> least. <laughs> Not at all. We're now just giving We are over... We're like 45 minutes into Look, the... Look, the movie's free. You need to go watch it. <laughs> Wait. We could tell you, but you wouldn't believe us. Also, it would come off as insane ramblings that your brain wouldn't be able to contain. But yeah, Beelzebub just shows up and he he looks like the forgotten, uh, not the forgotten one, the nameless one from fucking Planescape Torment. Mm -hmm. They used a really terrible filter over his entire body and has, it, it's, it's like this movie feels like the first half of a movie mm -hmm. because of Beelzebub, because apparently they were going to make the Hellbinder cinematic universe. Oh, well, yeah. That's what you do. I don't There's know why be they a would... transmedia event. There's going to be a game. I don't understand why they thought that made any sense when the thing was clearly put together on a shoestring budget and just 
probably in their free time. I don't. It seems that explain why there were so many weird shots because it was very rare. Everybody was available at once. Yeah, I I could see that. And this thing had like four directors or something, and it was yeah. mostly in piece, different pieces were directed by different people. Uh huh. Um, it looks like different pieces were shot on different equipment. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> it's it's a it's a real shame that this movie is nothing but like camcorders. I think there's only one scene that's done on some high end stuff. Yeah, it's when they're falling through hell. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> that one. You nailed it, bud. Now, does anybody have any closing thoughts on Hellbinders? Um. Yeah, sure. Hellbinders is a, an incomprehensible film. That uh, in many ways is exactly what I expected and very much beyond what I expected. Uh, I, in many different directions and ways. Yeah, kind of like fucking Cthulhu. <laughs> there are tentacles of, I didn't know a movie could be bad in this way, that it just sprung off into that I didn't expect. Uh, really, really incredible. I'm glad it's on Amazon Prime Video. That's definitely the home for content like this. You know, it's the only place you can watch. Uh, it's the only place you can watch Isolation One One Nine Two. So you know, it's a good. It's a good. It's a good place. There are so many horrible movies yeah. on Amazon Prime. Uh, I- I'm glad I watched this. I mean, I'm really excited for that sequel. It's definitely happening. You bought it like ten years ago. Yeah, I did. It would. <laughs> it's been sitting on that shelf waiting. Waiting for this moment. And you didn't even use it. You just picked it up off Amazon Prime. It's true. I wonder if the DVD looks any better. If the real, if reality mm. uh, is unraveling, Bob, this hard anyway, Bob, are there I special don't see features why we on could... that DVD? Oh no, there might be. <laughs> I put that thing down. Oh no. But my point is, see. if if all this other clown shit can happen, there's no reason we can't get a sequel to this now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Who knows? Maybe Disney will make it after they're done with The Lion King. I don't see any special features on it. Oh, uh, wow, the nerve. It's a shame. Um, but, you know, I can just pretend Double May Cry 5 is the, the ending. Or at least the, the behind-the-scenes <laughs> pre-animatic version <laughs> yes. of Double May Cry 5. Yeah, we decided during the uh, commentary, which you can find at uh, patreon.com slash Podcast. But we decided that this, this is just Double May Cry 2 now. It replaced Double May Cry 2 in the timeline. Yeah, sorry everyone, that's just, those are facts. I, I found Hellbinders in a 10 action movies DVD pack. What? <laughs> I, I posted it in, 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 in the Discord. Man. Look, the, it's in, in the top middle. That's great. Oh, that's, man. That's a good home oh, for man. it. Oh, man. Along with good girl, bad girl. What? Okay. Dude, we need to not. Hey, do you want to buy this? It's $5. <laughs> no. Please. No, but I, I, I'm writing down all of these. <laughs> oh, no. Listen, there is a Fast and the Furious ripoff on this box that says, Fast Track, No Limits. <laughs> I'm sure it's just as good. I'm sure they have discount Vin Diesel. Oh, man. That's my final thoughts on the film, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if that I think that's all we have. Thank you for listening to First Content Club. <laughs> Where, uh, fuck, just, just go watch the movie, it's incomprehensible. This Gigaboots video was brought to you by our magnanimous executive producers. Vincent Pover, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Brendan O'Sullivan, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Shadow in the Darkness, Dryzart, and Red Blaze 27. And also these guys. Head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today so you can try to be as cool as these people.